Welcome back to the channel. This is the Earth Science Classroom. This video is on meteorology and atmospheric science, and we're looking at jet streams, what they are, how they form, and how they play an important role in the upper troposphere, and how they influence the lower troposphere and the weather patterns beneath it. This is the Earth Science Classroom. This diagram is a comprehensive view of one hemisphere looking at the locations of two jet streams. You have the subpolar or polar front jet stream is star number one and number two is the subtropical jet stream. Now these two are in the upper troposphere between seven to ten kilometers above the surface. Now this is near the tropopause, which is the top part of the troposphere, the lowest layer of the atmosphere, and the pause is between 8 to 20 kilometers in altitude. Now that is varied because of latitude. Now over the equator where the uprising air is a lot stronger, the pause is 20 kilometers in altitude or up to. Whereas over the polar regions, over the North Pole and 90 degrees north, it is not as powerful, it is lower, it's between 8 and 10 kilometers. So the troposphere contains three convective cells looking at hot air rising and cold air sinking over certain latitudes. Now the Hadley, Farrell and Polar cell, they're both symmetrical in the hemispheres, so this is the northern hemisphere and it's the same in the southern hemisphere. Now the Hadley is the strongest where you have the rising air over the equator and sinking air over 30 degrees north, linking up with the Farrell cell, which then links up with the Polar cell between 60 north and 90 north, or the North Pole. Now. In between these convective cells, you have a large pressure gradient and difference in air and temperature, and this is where you'll find the two jet streams. Now, the atmospheric pressure of these jet streams is around 250 millibars. Now, the average pressure at the surface is around 1,013. So as you go up in the atmosphere, pressure decreases because of gravity and the air molecules spread out. So air pressure becomes quickly decreased as you increase in altitude. So this diagram is showing you the locations of the two jet streams. In this case, in the Northern Hemisphere, but it's the same for the Southern Hemisphere. So a jet stream is a fast moving channel of air between 100 miles an hour to 150 miles an hour and occasionally up to about 250 miles per hour in certain cases and the jet streaks are the fastest part of the jet stream. Now these are moving from west to east around the planet at a certain latitude which also denotes the point where the two air masses are meeting which also denotes where the two convective cells are meeting. So in the case of the polar front jet stream, it's where the polar cell is meeting the feral cell and the polar front, the cold air, is meeting the warm air, the westerlies from the south or the lower latitudes. And the subtropical jet stream is the meeting point of the feral cell and the Hadley cell. Now this is the same in both hemispheres and this point where the two air masses are meeting, where the change in pressure is the greatest, which is how they form, can fluctuate based on season and the amount of temperature, and this can create a kind of meandering effect of this fast-moving air going from west to east around the planet in these two locations, both subpolar and subtropical, and these meandering curves to the jet stream are called Rosby waves. And this diagram, this picture of the Earth is showing you what a jet stream kind of looks like with a coloration showing speed of the air. So the greens and blues are the slower moving air. And you have the jet streaks with the darker orange and red denoting the fastest parts of the jet stream. And again, this is looking at a large area around the planet moving from west to east. And this can indicate where there's going to be low and high pressure on the surface because when you have the jet stream diverging or converging 
in terms of its meandering or Rosby waves, as it moves around the Earth, it's going to control what pressure and what system you have, whether it's a cyclone or anticyclone, on the surface. So a divergence in the jet stream in the upper troposphere will cause a low pressure system on the surface, whereas a convergence where the air comes together in the jet stream that will cause a high pressure or anticyclone at the surface where it'll be opposite basically what's happening between the upper troposphere and the lower troposphere to equal out the movement of air. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on Earth Science.